Anyway, Elijah, long time no see. What's up, Boris? It's been a, a while, but I, I've been stuck in the classroom. <laughs> stuck? What do you mean? I've been stuck just back-to-back -back exams, classroom, uh, like lecturing. Um, I've been doing a lot of like presentations recently. Like that was kind of weird for a little bit. Um, presentations? Yeah, every, yeah, presentations, stuff like that. And it's hard because like you're already like studying for like exams every week. Mm -hmm. And then you get like presentations and then you have to go to like do these quizzes on top of that. And you have to do like, like service hours, like volunteer hours. It's it's a lot. Man. You it's have just... to do volunteer hours? For my program. Yeah. Oh my God. It, it's just lot. been a lot. It's a, it's like, I'm so mentally fatigued. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm just going on like autopilot at this point. Yeah. Yeah. It's like. It wasn't like the first exam where it's like, oh, okay, like I'm very like in the moment, um, you know, with what's happening. Uh, and then I just got blasted with that one month where I feel like I didn't <laughs> even like see you anymore, Boris. I like, Yeah, was, we were going kind of consistent <laughs> for a minute and then Elijah just went dark. And it's yeah. like, damn, he disappeared, but I know how it is. I totally get it. And I, I think I've been finding a groove now. I've definitely like uh -huh. the, the exams have been less frequent because I was having like two a week. Mm -hmm. now i'm only having like one a week so i've been kind of like trying to reel it back especially mm -hmm. since i've had so much family like visit recently mm -hmm. boris has done this i think a couple of weeks ago i had my mother-in-law come and then my brother and sister-in-law came and now my cousin surprised me this week oh geez but it's like it's, it's crazy because i can't even spend time with them because they're with right. my wife right now but i'm here in school i'm actually like in a study space right now studying while my <laughs> My cousin's out with my wife and they're just going to the spa and stuff like that. That's how it is, man. Yeah, it's 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 tough. I mean, I, I want to just do nothing at this point. <laughs> just Sometimes, but, honestly, you kind of just need to. Mm -hmm. Like, it's easy to feel pressured mm -hmm. after you've been studying and you've been away for so long that like any free time you have, you should be spending with your wife and your kids mm -hmm. and whoever. But all you really want to do is just sit there and just do nothing for a while you know? i, I kind of did that this past weekend like i mean yeah i was like you know what i have an exam coming up my cousin is here like she just surprised me i didn't expect this i had i already right. had my like study schedule planned out but uh -huh. i'm like you know what i know how to study for micro i already know what to expect on the test i know how to study efficiently for it because mm -hmm. i've had like what like 15 exams at this point so i was counting yeah, who's who's counting? It's yeah, who's like counting that. Exams. yeah. But yeah, I, I took the weekend for myself and for my cousin and family, and it was nice. It was nice to just take a step back. And you yeah. know, and even now I should be studying, but you know, I was like, I haven't seen Boris in a while. I miss him. I was talking to him. Oh, I miss you too. So here we are again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll make sure I send you the 75 cents this video is gonna produce as far as AdSense goes. Oh yeah, I'll need it for that'll help out. Things. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Wait, where are you at right now? Boston? No, you're in New Jersey. New Jersey, yeah. Okay, I'm going to surprise you too randomly. Be like, hey, guess what? Yeah, yeah, just just text me. If you're here, man, I'll, like, I'll just drop whatever I'm doing. We'll just hang out. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been to Jersey, and I can't really think of any reason to go besides Elijah. It's There's not really much to do here. It's like very uh, rural, especially the yeah. university I'm at. Um, I feel like there's more to do in the other campus. But yeah, over here, there's not really anything to do. I feel like it'd be more fun to go to new york yeah for sure like if i'm going east coast i'll go like philly boston new york city i haven't really thought of going to jersey there's nothing to do here <laughs> not really no <laughs> but you but, know that's what me and my family love it's it's suburban -y, it's it's rural yeah. uh there's not much to do yeah but anyway so you got a scholarship i did and okay. they Tell me more. dispersed it to me um it was called the champions endowed scholarship so what is it champions endowed yeah I, I didn't specifically apply to the scholarship i applied to like a general scholarship through my school mm -hmm. um and then they basically sent my application to a bunch of different scholarships mm -hmm. um and then yeah so they a bunch of committees like were, uh, from these different scholarships reviewed my application and that's the one i got um yeah you could type in rutgers there I'm it just is curious as to what this thing is i've never heard of it it was quite a lot. I, I was talking to the lady who informed me that, oh, like you got a scholarship. Um, and I forgot I even applied to this scholarship. 
Oh, yeah. Um, and she was saying, like, oh, yeah, like, it was, like, one of the highest awards. And I think I ended up getting around close to $4,000 from it. Whoa. Uh, it was it was pretty big. Uh, let's see. Where that's is so it? Cool. Right so there. what is it? Down. Oh, this guy. Based on financial need and epic- academic merit. Yeah, and so... there, there's, like, a bunch of different ones that you get. A, um, so it's, like, a general application you fill out, and they send it out to these specific ones. Like, I don't have to apply to each specific scholarship. Oh, it's like a general application for all these scholarships. Yeah. Damn, Damn, there's so many of them. There's a lot. Yeah, and there's like PA-specific ones, but I can't apply to those until uh, I'm in my second year because they need to see my grades from uh, these these past semesters. Yeah, there it is. PA students who will be in their second or third years. I'm sure that Mm -hmm. fall 2022 is not accurate anymore. No, Um, not out of date. (laughs) Details on criteria. So, yeah, I wish we had stuff like this. We never did anything like this. Or maybe you had it or like they just didn't make you aware because my program never made us aware of any of these scholarships. Oh, who told you about this? Oh, I just I was just looking. <laughs> oh, damn. You're so resourceful because I, I like I never knew about any of this stuff. I, I had a couple second years that I was close to before coming into school. Mm. And they kind of told me like, oh, yeah, you should apply to these. And so I did. And I, I got a pretty hefty amount. So I was really happy with that. Dude, that's pretty awesome. I mean, Like, in the grand scheme of things, it's kind of a drop in the bucket. But, like, while you're a student, four grand? That's a lot. That's a lot of, that's a lot of money. That's That's rent rent. for, like, three months. Yep, exactly. And, like, it'll it'll help because, like, three grand, like, even, like, coming out of school, like, that's Mm -hmm. a lot of money because, I don't know. What is that, like, a week or two working as a PA? That's still, Uh, like. (laughs) If you're traveling, it's, like, a week. If you're not traveling, it's, like, like, a paycheck. Like, yeah, bi-weekly paycheck. But yeah, it was depending um, on what you do. It was it was a great scholarship, and I you know tried to find other ways of, uh, cutting costs like um waiving my health insurance and just applying to basically Medicare because I'm a student and I would be able to mm-hmm. be eligible for that. So true. That's a, another thing is like Medicare or Medicaid. I I don't know. I know it's under the Medicare umbrella, but uh-huh. it's like state specific to New Jersey. There's a different like umbrella term for it, but mm-hmm. Um, basically it's like Medicare for New Jersey residents. I mean, that's nice. These are all ways that people don't think to save money, especially like adult students who are not on their parents' insurance plan anymore. Right. Yeah. Like you can get Medicare or Medicaid. I'm not sure which one, mm-hmm. um, I would imagine Medicaid. Cause you're just like a healthy, young, low income person. Um, mm-hmm. I wonder if you could even like draw unemployment or something. I don't know about that one. I haven't looked into that, but. I know Probably I'm saving not. a lot because my school's health insurance was close to like three grand for the year. Wow. So that's like another three grand that I'm saving. That too. So that's another. Okay. So let's say you apply for some scholarships, you get like a $4,000 reward like Elijah and you get Medicare, which I mean, everybody should be eligible for. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's seven grand. You just saved that year. That's yep, a lot. That, that's a lot of money. That's a lot. Granted, and then, K school is like six figures, but that's still like a good chunk of it. I mean, it's what if it's like, let's say it's 100K, that's 7%. 7% is pretty damn good. That's like about what the S&P goes up every year. Mm -hmm. It's like what inflation goes up in like two days nowadays. I am am guilty of using some of that money towards my anniversary gift for my wife. So (laughs) that's allowed. That's like a a a staple. (laughs) Oh, that's so cool. Other than that, yeah, I've been like pretty frugal. just because I've, I've been living like the student life for a while now. So mm-hmm. I'm just used to it. And me and my wife even talked about it uh, after school's done. Like we want to still like somewhat be somewhat frugal. Mm-hmm. I always joke with her that she's going to be like the cushy resident in med school. But we still want to yes. like so- be somewhat frugal. You say that now. Yeah. You say that now. I don't know. I don't know. I, I feel like everything goes back and forth. Like you start making money and then you kind of. You either go crazy right away and then you realize I need to reel it back or you start mm-hmm. going not crazy and you try to be smart and then the opportunity to go crazy comes and you just can't like not do it. Mm-hmm. I don't know, man. Like, it's whatever. It's fine. It happens. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Kind of regret buying some things, but it, it also happens. Uh, <laughs> no, so it's pretty cool that like, I wonder if a lot of programs have these scholarships that they may, may or may not tell you about. Uh, maybe something you can ask like the dean or your professors about, or just kind of Google, you know, just Googling. Googling is your best friend. Just scholarships. Yeah. Uh, type in your PA program or the 
mm-hmm. or like the school. Uh, for me, uh, yeah, I go to Rutgers, but it's under the umbrella of Rutgers. So it's Rutgers and then um, Rutgers like health or something like that. Uh, hmm. So yeah, like this falls under like, the, yeah, the SHP, yeah, School of Health Professions. So mm-hmm. there's Rutgers University and the School of Health Professions, which is a school under like a different college under Rutgers, which like embodies like the PA program, the OT mm-hmm. program, stuff like that. Yeah. So, I mean, even if your professors don't know, um, one, you could probably just in person go to the financial aid office. Maybe somebody there would know. Um, yeah. And whether or not they do, you could just Google it and then figure out how to apply. I mean, if like, if so few people know about these things, that means probably not a lot of people are applying for them, which increases your chances. You know what? A, a good chunk of my classmates did. I think at least half of my class, which is like 25, half of 50. So like around 25 students, I think applied mm-hmm. to it, but only like three or four of us ended up getting the scholarship. So it wow. is still kind of competitive a little I'm bit. I'm sure it is. Um student service so there's a bunch of different scholarships i'm sure like some like you have to do certain things maybe you do volunteer hours or write an essay yeah uh that kind of thing some of them maybe you just kind of get i just use my personal statement from caspa there you go oh i, I probably shouldn't say that but whatever yeah i use my personal <laughs> statement from caspa i it was a great story i thought they liked it <laughs> it literally is it. man i mean whatever there's nothing wrong with reusing it well, yeah, this is cool. So that's definitely an option. Did they tell you guys at all about AHEC? I don't even know what that is. What is that? I forgot what it stands for. Um, we have this. So it might be just a New York State thing. I'm not certain. But okay. New York State schools, I'm sure there's other things that are comparable throughout other states, but New York State schools, and there's, I don't know how many, at least 10 PA programs in New York State. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have this, which I forget what the heck it stands for uh academic holy crap health professional i don't know it doesn't say what the acronym is but basically it's uh it's like government grants intended to train training health professionals so like doctors dentists pas to take care of uh like lower income kind of folks Mm -hmm. and so if any of your rotations happen to be in those kinds of areas they will pay for one, you get like a 500 bucks or a thousand bucks or something. uh, And they will pay for like housing and travel and stuff like that. Did you say rotations or like rotations? uh, Oh, rotation. Yeah. So this is another second year thing. Oh, that's so cool. Although maybe it says it's a two year thing. So maybe they start doing it during the first year too. Yeah. Cause I, I mean, it was like a pilot program when I did it. Uh-huh. And like when I presented it, nobody was interested. And so it wasn't competitive at all. You just like write an essay and you're like, I want to take care of rural populations because X, Y, and Z. And then, you know, they accept you. And then mm-hmm. they do like this training and like some other stuff that you have to do. Basically extra classwork, just not a lot of it. And then mm-hmm. they gave you like a little bit of money. I think it was like maybe a thousand bucks, uh, which is nothing to sneeze at. But the main thing is they gave you a big budget for travel. So like, oh, for yeah. instance... If you do rotations, that's like three hours away from campus. You know, you have to find somewhere to live. They'll pay for that. Oh, really? That was nice. I wonder if this applies to programs that like aren't in New, in York. New York City. Yeah, I like what if know. I'm like close enough, like in Jersey, but I do rotations in New York City. New York State, you mean? Um, or State, sorry. I don't know. You can certainly ask. It says New York State oh. AHEC system, so I don't know. I don't see why not. Oh, there's the acronym. It's on the top left. Uh very see? top left, very top left of the screen. Oh, geez. Health Education Center System, NYS York, Area. New York State Area Health Education Center System. Okay, sure. <laughs> so much like acronyms. It doesn't flow that well together, but it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I don't even think it makes sense. Uh, but either way, yeah, they'll like, they'll train you like, on the needs that rural and, and urban populations have for healthcare. And then they'll basically pay for mm-hmm. travel for your rotations and whatnot, which is cool. And this kind of like builds on like what we, we've kind of talked about this before, where there's like also programs you can do after you graduate, like mm-hmm. as a postgraduate, we talked about the NHSC. Mm-hmm. Um, and now we have like this option, uh, at least for schools in New York state, where you can essentially 
rotations are seen as you working for free, but if they're going to pay for your travel and like give you like a thousand dollar stipend, that's amazing. Like then you're not technically working for free. Like you're, I mean, it's almost like you're working. You're yeah. practicing for free. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Like you could frame it that way that you're like working for free uh, mm -hmm. or it's like you're well, actually you're technically you're paying to work because you're paying tuition. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. But it's like, <laughs> I don't know how, how I'd frame it. I wouldn't say you're working for free. I would say mm -hmm. you're working, you're getting experience without mm -hmm. any of the risk and working under somebody else's license. That that That's true. You know, because like right now, like I'm practicing medicine, right? If I make a mistake and it's a terrible mistake, that's my ass. That's my license. I'm screwed. Mm -hmm. As a student, you're kind of doing the same thing, but it's under somebody else's license. Right, you're preceptor. Yeah, which is a yeah. tremendously good thing for you to do because you're like, it's just good. You know, you can actually do things. You can practice <laughs> without the repercussions because you're going to like run it by your preceptor. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I wouldn't call it working for free. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, yeah, I mean, there's so many opportunities for you, like, you guys to just find ways to pay for school or help like chip off mm -hmm. some of the amount. It is big. And you know what? I Like Boris said, I don't know. Maybe, maybe my specific class, a lot of us apply to the scholarship. But there's some programs in some schools where no one applies to these scholarships at all. Yeah, literally. Um, my cousin is um, a financial aid advisor over at Cal State Long Beach in California. She would tell me like, yeah, um, none of the nurses would apply to the nursing scholarships. And it's ba there's basically no competition at all for it. It's, yeah, free money that mm -hmm. nobody's taking advantage of. That's a, that's a lot like what the AHIC thing was like. We got the presentation. And as soon as they said two hours of extra coursework, everyone just like checked out. <laughs> they were just like, no, nope, I'm not doing this. But then I don't know. I just like on a whim decided to apply, and like only five of us applied, and five of us got it. So we all oh, got. So we did that. Yeah, yeah, I did it. Oh, oh. Yeah. So I knew about. It was kind of disorganized because it was brand new. So I knew yeah. that there was going to be a small stipend, which ended up being I think like 1,200 bucks. Which you know it's something. Um, mm -hmm. What I didn't know is that there was a travel budget. So like there was places that I went that were well over an hour away from my home. So I ended up paying for an Airbnb and I didn't know that they would cover it. Oh, wow. So then the very last one that I did, that was like four hours away. I got like mm -hmm. the most expensive freaking apartment to just use up that budget. But well, what's the budget like? It was like 5k. That's so much. Right. That's so nice. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I can't like speak to what it is now. I don't know if it's still like that. I would imagine it is. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like you already have your apartment in whatever city your school's in, and then you need other housing that's like further away. So you're gonna be, you know, paying for that. It'd be mm -hmm. kind of nice to have that paid for. So you didn't do rotations like near your school, huh? You did it kind of far. Like half of them were right in Syracuse, were right around the school. Um, a few more were within like maybe one or two hours. Kind of like cities oh, wow. that are close by. And then there was one that was like four hours away. Okay. Yeah. Would you say that's common for like, yeah. not, okay. So you, just for future reference for me, because I'm also looking into rotations right now. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering like, do I need a car? Am I yes. going to have to pull out extra loans for like to be in a hotel essentially if I'm like that far yeah. away? Hotel, Airbnb. A lot of times they have connections like where students have already stayed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because they have like nightmare stories, like students trying to stay in their car, renting like a tent. It's like crazy <laughs> shit to save money. And then they're like, please don't do that. Please stay here. Like this nurse said that you can stay with her. Like this doctor said that he has a spare room, that kind of situation. A lot of times they have connections. Oh, thank goodness. Because I'm lot thinking like, how am I going to pay for my apartment and pay for an Airbnb or a slash hotel? Loans. <laughs> okay. Student loans. Got it. Yeah, I guess like, I don't know, I've never had, or I had student loans in undergrad. I never had them for PA school. Mm -hmm. And I guess they give you quite a bit. Oh, like uh, in loans to yeah. actually travel? For like living expenses and, and whatnot, yeah. That's weird because I'm, I'm over here talking about being so frugal in my first year and uh -huh. all my loans are going to be literally my rotation year. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So the way I know that is this house. I just talked to a couple of medical students who are going to rent it hopefully soon. Mm -hmm. And they were talking about how they're going to use their student loans to pay it. And they were like, they give us so much money for student loans. Like we can afford it. You, you can actually pull up so much from student yeah. loans. It, it's kind of, it's kind of dangerous. 
I mean, for an MD, like a, a doctor student, I guess they're probably pretty liberal. They're just like, yeah, you're going to be making a lot. Here's as much as you want. Yeah. <laughs> but then if you fail out, like you're totally screwed. Oh, yeah. You're so screwed. There, that does happen. People do fail out. They literally do. Okay. So that's something people don't think about is like, <laughs> let's say medical school or PA school or dental school. You pull out all these loans. A lot of mm -hmm. people don't think about the, you know, pretty remote possibility. But in every class, there's at least that one guy or that one girl that doesn't make it. Mm -hmm. So now what do you do? You pulled out 100K in loans and now you don't have that hundred to three hundred thousand dollar salary to pay them. What do you do now? You can't uh -huh. bankrupt them. They're student loans. So you're like so screwed. So, so either you got to try to get back in or like just find a different path. Like, yeah, literally, that's one thing that people do not consider. Like, mm -hmm. so that's, okay, I'm going to go on a rant. So <laughs> that's one thing that bothers me a little bit is, so I'm part of like the pre-PA community, because obviously, mm -hmm. this is our business. But I see all the time in these pre-PA groups, someone posts like, I got in, I'm going to be a PA. Mm -hmm. You probably will be a PA. But what if you're not? What if you don't make it? Yeah. What That's if you don't make it? There is somebody in every class that doesn't make it, that either fails out within the first semester, in the second semester, keeps mm. getting recycled and keeps trying and trying, uh, doesn't pass their pants. Like, yeah, you probably will, but I don't know. Just just be careful. No? So uh, we actually did have someone. Uh, uh, we don't kick out anyone or dismiss them as fast in our program i think i mm -hmm. think uh what happens is like you're given some sort of grace which yeah. is in the form of like deceleration so you would just get decelerated to the next class so yeah basically you would take like a leave of absence and then start again with the next year we've had people do that but sometimes Ooh. they don't make it sorry my wife oh. called <laughs> oh. um yeah no we've had that and somebody in my class i think was decelerated for like the third time and I'm not still not certain if they actually made it through or not. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, well, I mean, a third, a third time, a third time. That's three years. Yeah. Oh, my. Oh, yeah. That's scary. Right. So imagine doing all of that and then not making. it. I mean, oh, gosh, there's it's weird because I was just on this like <laughs> in this uh, rabbit hole on YouTube the other day yeah. looking at like what happens when PA school students or med students uh, fail out of school. Yeah, and it was, it it's crazy, but like I mean that it does happen. People it do does. fail out, and I I think the most important part is if you're in that population, and it's not that big of a mm -hmm. population. There's not that much info on what to do. Yeah, I think the best thing to do is just really just find yourself again, right? Like, what's your why? If you if this is really what you want to do, right? It's it's honestly just getting past didactic. That's how I feel. I don't know. I haven't reached clinicals yet, but I feel mm -hmm. like just when you get over the hump of didactic, I feel like rotations, yeah, it's, it's also a beast, but I, it's related to what you want to do. And I think that it's hard for, especially for me and some of my classmates like to see past like the didactic. And I think that's why some of us aren't doing as well because we don't see the clinical relevance. Like it's not interesting to us. We're learning about microbiome biochem again, basically. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah, but failing it's, it's it's rough. Uh, I I wouldn't even know how to advise someone on like what's the next step besides just taking a step back and mm -hmm. you know like reevaluating life and study habits, you know, and like using it as a, as a drive to push you even harder next year. Yeah, I think it would be so situation specific mm -hmm. if somebody was you know asking for our advice for that. Uh, but yeah, the main thing I, I think I agree with Elijah is like, why did you, why did this happen? You know, is this really not for you? Is this, cause I don't think you have to be that smart to make it through PA school. Mm -hmm. You really don't like, they're going to tell you in your first year, like you're the smartest students, blah, blah, blah. Maybe I'd say hardest working. Yeah. And most motivated. Oh yeah. You definitely have to put in work. It, you can't just, well, there are some students that can just read things and, are sure. just naturally gifted but yeah we had some of those um but yeah i think like smartest smartest like highest iq was like your physicists your like chemical engineers oh like, yeah like, rocket scientists like that kind of stuff i think medical people are very very motivated and hard working some are like super brilliant but mostly mm -hmm. we're just like super hard working yeah
and just like we don't quit. Um, which all of that goes to say, like, if you are doing it, if you failed for whatever reason out of PA school or med school for some reason, like the evaluation wouldn't be why, like, what's wrong with me? Am I not smart enough? It's why didn't I try hard enough or why were my study habits not good enough? Mm -hmm. uh, like, you know, what can I fix or why is, is this just not what I really want? So I wasn't motivated. You know, you got to figure that out. And then there's like also like extenuating circumstances because my classmate, it wasn't only mm -hmm. uh, adapting to PA school because that was like our first like hell month. Uh, but she also got like sick with COVID and it, yeah. it's just a combination of things that caused her to like essentially struggle in the first month. So she mm -hmm. had to decelerate. But now she knows like what to expect next year. Mm -hmm. And she like, I guess knows to try not to get sick. But I mean, how do you how do you stop that? Like you don't, but you just push through, man. I don't know. Like what happens if you're mm -hmm. practicing and you get sick? Do you just keep going? I mean, it's yeah. tough, but maybe take a day off or here and there. But like, I don't know. You just you just do it. <laughs> like just sit in the back of the classroom so no one else gets sick. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Wear a mask and take your vitamin D and your zinc and your vitamin C and drink your orange juice and you'll be fine. Probably not medical advice, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that, that's a tough one. A tough one that people don't talk about is like, what happens if you fail your pants or if you fail out of your program, every program, like almost no programs have a complete zero attrition rate. There's usually right. people getting recycled or failing out at least one or two here and there, you know? So yeah, something to think about. Yeah. I mean, it, it is a touchy subject, but. It's hopefully tough, it's people who like are in that situation reach out to the right advisors and mm -hmm. like uh, like connect with others who have also been in the same situation but have actually like thrived yeah you, you know and at the end of the day if you got decelerated once or twice but mm -hmm. make it in the end like who cares your job yeah. isn't gonna ask you like oh no. you ever decelerate yeah like they'll never ask you that yeah that's not really something that they think about they're just like are you certified do we like mm -hmm. you go yep yeah like uh, something I'm going to talk about in a future video, but I actually got really close to failing out of the program during second year. Oh, during clinical year. Oh God, Re really? Oh yeah, because like didactic, it doesn't end at didactic. Because mm -hmm. during clinical year, like one, there's rotation, so it's like you're evaluated on your performance, and your performance might not be good uh, at certain rotations. Mm -hmm. Two, there might be, like Elijah said, extenuating circumstances. Something might be going on in your personal life or you get sick or whatever and, like, screws up your whole rotation. You know, a core rotation. you got to have that. Um, and three, you could fail a uh, end-of-rotation exam because they have those after every okay. single rotation, and they're really hard. Mm -hmm. You know? So I've definitely seen, like, some of my classmates, they failed one, and then they got really close to another one. And, like, if they failed another one, then you're recycled all the way back. Or they do some sort of remediation. I don't know. But like, it's certainly possible to fail in clinical year two. Well, I didn't even, I knew it was a possibility. I just feel mm -hmm. like it, it happens more in didactic or no. What, it does. What do you think? Yeah, oh, usually okay. more people are weeded out in didactic, but it's certainly possible in clinical. Okay. Very, very possible. Well, that's scary, Boris. I didn't know you were in that situation. Speaking from personal experience. Yep. I had to do an extra rotation. I was this close to, you know, not making it. Do you mind me asking which rotation it was? Pediatrics. Oh, God. I, I'm not going to do all there to either. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, like, one, I have zero experience with pediatrics in my, like, pre-PA experience. I have zero experience with kids. Like, now my, my sister has a kid, so i got some experience. You know, plus, now I'm <laughs> working an, with kids. So now I, yeah, being an uncle and just also just, like, you know, working with kids now in urgent care. Yeah. Like, I've got way more experience. Mm -hmm. But, like, I had no experience with children whatsoever in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> so I was going into this thing, like, what are these things? Like, I don't know how to interact with this thing. <laughs> and, like, I don't know. It was just so bizarre because I've never worked with kids in any way, shape, or form. There was no kids in my family. I'm the youngest in my family. And I was 30 oh, at this time. Okay. So it's like I literally did not know anything to do with kids. Didn't know how to talk to them. Didn't know how to inject, you know, uh, vaccines into them. Didn't know how to treat them. I just didn't know anything about kids. So I was already starting on like a foot back. Um, I just completely smashed the EOR because there's not really all that much to learn for the pediatrics EOR. But just like practically, yeah. Oof, yeah, practically it was rough. It, yeah, it was rough. I, I remember my first interactions in the ED when I was a tech. 
Mm-hmm. It was really like oh, it was so different. But I mean, having a son, I was able to like you know kind of adjust yeah. fast. Yeah. But it, it's it's so different. It's like yeah, you really can't talk to them like adults. Like <laughs> no, you can't. No, you cannot. And it's, it's just it's a lot of different tactics. dynamics. Yeah, they, it's so yeah. different. Okay, it's so, so different. I can see why. I can see why that and could be a with the parents. That too. Oh my gosh. Because mm-hmm. you're treating uh-huh. the parents. You're not treating the kid essentially. You're treating the parents. They're the they're your historian. <laughs> they're the ones that yeah. it's just a very complicated dynamic. And then also children are terrifying because they're okay until they're not. Yes. Like adults, they'll be like, Oh, I had bronchitis a year ago and now I this is starting to feel like bronchitis and I know it's getting bad and I want to nip it in the bud. A kid is just gonna be running around until they just can't breathe and then they're Yo, yeah, yeah. So kids are terrifying. And then there's the whole getting used to the MIGs per kig, the like weight-based oh, dosing as yeah. opposed to just regular dosing for adults. Yeah. Like weight-based. it's kids are scary until you're more used to them. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I think, I think in class today, we had an ethics class where we talked about like how uh, I think like a nurse or provider like administered like the wrong dose dosage. Oh, yeah. Because it, 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 oh, yeah. it's like you said, like, it's weight-based. It's, it's different. so easy to do because they'll let you prescribe it yeah it's not gonna flag you it's just okay there it goes and the parents don't know shit like they're not providers so they'll be like oh well the provider said take this dose i'll give junior 15 milliliters of this shit and then Mm -hmm. oh no why is junior like passing out and oh oh, man they don't have a pulse like that's because you overdose them Or, or it's something that you really needed to treat and you underdose them and now they're in trouble and it's still your fault Mm -hmm. so it's like children are so scary (laughs) because <laughs> one they don't know what's going uh-huh. on two they can't tell you what's going on especially if they're little three they're okay until they're not four getting very comfortable with doing math milliliters per, per kilogram and you have all these like resources like you have hippocrates and you have pd quick oh, yeah. calc and you have like all these like little spreadsheets everywhere that are just passed down but you can't trust that you have to know the mix per kg and then do it yourself because like if something happens and you go, well, I was using this chart that my coworker gave me, that's not going to hold up in court. Oh yeah. So you better know it yourself. Like how many MIGs per kick are you doing? Do the math. It's I'm, terrifying. I'm getting, I'm getting scared. Now. <laughs> it, you should be. You should be. If you're practicing medicine and you're not even a little bit scared, you're going to make a mistake. I quadruple I check everything. How easy it was. Everyone in my class today had a story about yeah. medical mistakes. It was crazy. Mm-hmm. There's always was, a medical it, mistake. Oof. Yeah. It's heavy. Hopefully when you make one, it's you know, nobody gets hurt. Oh, oh yeah. Hopefully. My goodness. Mm-hmm. There's there's so many horror stories out there. Mm-hmm. I mean, say what you will about the US healthcare system, because we we always say like we treat the lawyers, we don't treat the patient. Mm-hmm. So like there's a less than one percent chance of this happening, but I still have to like do the testing and or the treatment to make sure that it doesn't, because if I mm-hmm. miss it, then I'm screwed. Right. And that treatment ends up hurting the patient, you know, excess antibiotics, excess steroids, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like that, there's that. But at the same time, that kind of thinking makes you way more careful than you otherwise would be. Oh, yeah. You know, like I had a guy come in with testicular pain. He was currently asymptomatic. I did the exam. He wasn't tender. There was nothing going on, you know, abnormal in the exam. However, he's like, it comes and goes. It's been coming and going for two months. Sometimes it lasts for like an hour. It's mm-hmm. spontaneous. I can't tell him that he doesn't have torsion and torsion can be, you know, at least testicle threatening slash possibly life threatening. Right. Um, so even though he was feeling totally normal, exam was normal. I still said, you need an ultrasound pronto. Yep. You need to go to the ER. So he's going to spend 17 hours at the ER for something that may be nothing. Then again, if he has torsion, he's going to be glad I sent him. Oh yeah. It's like a, it like falls in line with that culture of like CYA, like cover your ass. But at the same time, like you can't, you never know. You, you know? want to be careful. Yeah. You want to be extra careful. And like the more experience you get, the more you can be like, okay, yes, you have pneumonia. These antibiotics will probably cover it. Your O2 saturation is fine. You sound okay. You know, you're. it's only been going on six days. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're stable. You're hemodynamically stable. You're not having trouble breathing. Let's just treat you with antibiotics and have you closely follow up. Whereas before when I was brand new, oh, pneumonia, hospital, everybody, I don't care if you're 25. <laughs> <laughs> everyone's going to the hospital <laughs> everyone's go- oh yeah yeah when i'm when i don't know everyone goes uh so it's like you start being way more careful and when you have more experience you're kind of more selectively careful yeah i mean i feel like that runs synonymous with so many things right like practicing mm-hmm. as a pa 
being a PA student where you like go hard and studying the first, and then dial it back. Yeah, you rather go to hundred percent. Yeah, it just comes with experience. You're in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's just how practice is in your first mm -hmm. few years. I don't know oh, how gosh. we got on that time. How did we get on that tangent? I don't know. That's how that's how our conversations usually go. We just kind of <laughs> <laughs> we I'm... feed off each other's energy. <laughs> yeah, true. True. And we have four minutes left in this recording, so we should do one last topic, unless you want to just do like a pants review. Yeah, yeah, let's do a pants review.